It's no secret that the LEGO Harry Potter theme relies pretty heavily on remakes. And sometimes, yeah, they can get a little old. But one remake that I've been really excited for is the Durmstrang ship. And this summer, with the release of Triwizard Tournament, the arrival, we are finally getting an updated version of the iconic ship. And as you can see by the box art here too, we're also getting an updated version of the Bow Batten's carriage. So today we're going to take a look at three sets all together. Of course, the brand new 2024 set, but also the Durmstrang ship from 2005, and then the Bow Batten's carriage from 2019. Let's take a closer look. The new Bow Batten's carriage makes up a pretty small part of the new set, but I thought it was worth highlighting it here alongside the not too old 2019 version. The original set, Bow Batten's carriage arrival at Hogwarts, was released in August of 2019. It included four minifigures, which are still exclusive to this day, had 430 pieces and cost $50. And you can probably pick it up for about that price today yet too. Two of the set's figures have been remade for the 2024 version. And while each set has the characters in the same costumes, the detailing throughout them is very different. Madame Maxime has changed substantially. In the new set, she actually has the longer leg variants that we saw prominently featured in the Avatar sets. And she's also got the same arms that those figures had too. The prints have also been updated along with a hairpiece now in dark brown instead of black. Even the face print on both sides has been updated. It's nice to have two versions of this figure now. The old one of course just had a regular 2x2x3 slope printed nicely on both sides but you don't get the versatility of being able to bend the legs like you do in the 2024 version. Fleur de Delacour has also received some minor updates, going as far as to update the dual molded hat, which in the 2024 version is done in sand blue, as opposed to the lighter blue. You still get the dual molded legs, which is great, and the torso print front and back has been updated in the new version, along with both sides again of the face print. The new carriage is naturally much smaller. It is more or less a side build to the larger Durmstrang ship, but I like what they've done with the 2024 remake. It's not as interesting as the original set, but its smaller size gives it a more polished look. And there's still plenty of space in the interior to seat two minifigures. The carriage is pulled by one winged horse, which has been slightly updated with silver wings instead of white ones. The original carriage has probably what I'd consider to be a very underrated play feature in that the thing kind of expands to be a double decker by opening it up. It's a really clever design that makes great use of the space available. And I don't think it was realistic to expect something like this of the much smaller model. And that's always going to make this standalone carriage kind of special. But enough of that, let's talk about the ships. The original Durmstrang ship from 2005 is pretty iconic. It was one of only four sets released that year and it was the largest of the bunch. There technically are two versions of this set. There was a Target exclusive that would have included four additional minifigures. That's going to be the Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Dumbledore that were included in other sets of this wave. So no exclusives or anything like that. The two figures included in the set are exclusive. You get Victor Mr. Crumb and Igor Karkaroff. The two figures are pretty similar. The only thing that differentiates them are going to be their accessories and their face prints. The 2024 ship includes updated versions of both Igor Karkaroff and Victor Crumb. And for both figures, it's a pretty night and day difference here. These are probably two of my favorite minifigures of the summer 2024 wave. The 2005 ship really is something else. You're looking at a ship that is 21 inches tall and 20 inches long. You'll see soon enough that that does significantly beat out the newer and more expensive model. Much of that size is due to the huge hull that makes up the ship. These are some massive elements that were introduced with four juniors pirates. The two hull elements are only slightly different with the back one having the suggestion of a rudder molded into the piece itself. Those huge hull pieces give you plenty of space to pose minifigures around and there's also lots of space for interior. The back of the ship can come apart in three sections and this topmost part was always one of my favorites as a kid. You can take this off, it's got these hinged doors here on the front, but you 
you can actually open the whole thing up. It's just hinged in the back and there's some wonderful interior details. It just feels appropriately magical and mysterious too. You can kind of make up your own stories about what kind of magic they learn at this school. And as I see it, this blue flame is like the Goblet of Fire itself. Is Durmstrength stealing it? Did they bring it in the first place? Who knows? A great spark for a little bit of storytelling. The top of this simple room is fantastic too. You get these two by two chrome gold dishes, four of them in the set. That's a very rare and expensive element these days. But these aren't the last chrome elements that we'll be looking at either, as I'm sure you've already seen. This all connects to that second layer rather nicely. You can see there we've got the wheel along with a map, which is kind of a fun touch too. Beneath all this, we get some more interior details. This seems to be Professor Karkarov's office. There's just a table with two benches on the side. Opening that up reveals a sextant piece, and then on top, just got a lamp and a letter. Again, just tons of room in here. On the wall, we've got a walking stick, and then we've also got a broomstick on the other side. A nice little nod to Victor Crumb's Quidditch playing. Taking a look around the outside, you'll notice that we have four chrome gold pips, which is just a crazy addition. Another very rare and expensive element that this set just had all sorts of. Above that, too, we get some printed shields. Interestingly enough, one is the Falcon Knights, and then the other is an exclusive Durmstrang shield, which is really cool. Perhaps my favorite part in the whole set, though, is one that you definitely can't miss. There's three of them. It's these wonderful fabric flags. The ship might not have sails, but these are great. There's a few other fun functions that the set has, one being a plank with which you can just launch Victor Crumb into the Black Lake. Super awesome. And then there's this other compartment built into the hull of the ship. You can just remove this floorboard and you've got yourself a pretty effective dungeon just beneath the ship. At $50, this probably would have been one of the best pirate ships ships that you ever could have gotten. As much as I love the 2005 model, there's no doubt that in terms of looks, the 2024 ship blows it out of the water. And speaking of water, let's see if it floats. Okay, I haven't actually tested it yet, but I'm guessing that was a horrible failure. So the 2005 model had 550 pieces all going toward the boat. The 2024 set has 1,229 pieces. And I think it's safe to say that at least a thousand pieces go into this ship. Yet the model is significantly smaller. It's 15 inches long compared to the 2005's 20 inches. The new set doesn't cheat by making use of two pre-built hull pieces. It's all built from scratch and with beautiful effect. The shaping of the actual Durmstrang ship is incredibly unique, and I cannot believe how well the designer managed to capture that in a Lego playset aimed at 10 year olds. Some of my favorite clever parts usage include this hinge piece that perfectly fills in this awkward angle that would have been left in the front. I love how these arched pieces line up exactly with the sides of the boat. It's just all so well sculpted. We don't see nearly enough Lego ships, so it's really fun to watch the designers flex their muscle a little bit with this one. The ship obviously uses a lot of small parts to create some really incredible detailing, but it also relies very heavily on stickers. We get more movie accurate shields on the sides of the ship this time around, which is fun to see, but they are all accomplished with stickers. And there's plenty of other stickers along the base of the ship, and even tiny ones making up the eye of the creature in the front. At the end of the day, as painful as they might have been to attach, I think they do add a lot to the ship overall. And a lot of it, like the faces down here, is detail that would have been very hard to capture using regular pieces. Another huge change from the original set is going to be the inclusion of actual sail pieces. The top flags, interestingly enough, are all different. They have varying amounts of stripes on them, which I think is a cool touch. Though this fabric isn't is nearly as awesome as the stuff from the original. The sails, however, do hold their shape really well because they're starched like that. I don't know if you noticed, but this ship is significantly narrower than the 2005 one. That gives you a bit less space to work with, especially once you got the sails in the way. But there is still some interior detailing 
hidden around on the ship. At the front, where the prison would have been on the original model, you can pull up the floorboards to find a table and a simple bed. The space is too short to actually have a minifigure standing and have the roof on, but I'm glad they managed to shove something down in there. You can also get into the back of the ship, though this section is tricky to remove at best because of the rigging that you find on either side. Maybe there's a better way to do this that I missed in the instructions. Again, like the 2005 model, you've got Igor Karkarov's office. He's got a chair and a table with some food on it, and there's a little crystal hidden up on the wall. But that's gonna be the extent of the playability and hidden features. No planks to fire Victor Crumb off into the ocean, unfortunately, this time around. And in that regard, for what I believe is going to be $140, this becomes a rather simple set. It gives you two beautifully executed vehicles and some great minifigures to go along with them. Did I mention that we get Barty Crouch Sr. in this set too? A very random inclusion, but I'm so glad that he finally made his way into minifigure form. He brings the Triwizard Cup and the Goblet of Fire to this party too, so a few extra little bits and bobs for the set. Unsurprisingly, the trend continues. The old set was a lot more fun, but boy oh boy do the new ones look pretty. As someone who has tried in the past to make a Durmstrang ship mock, this is very satisfying to see because it's a lot better than whatever I came up with. The designer behind this one should be truly proud. I do wish it just had a little bit more fun little secrets to offer like the original did. So here, take this. My recommendation is conditional but simple. If you need a bathtub toy, you gotta go for the original, now $200 ship. It's gonna be a great time. If you're looking for a drier experience, the new model might not be such a bad pick. But anyway, that's all I've got for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great life and I'll see you later.